So today we're going to talk about one of the most common questions I get from people that are forming LLCs. How to pay yourself with an LLC. Hey, my name is Jim Hart. I'm the founding attorney here at Hawthorne Law. We help online entrepreneurs and small business owners to get their legal house in order so that they can focus on doing what they do best, and that's building something that truly matters in the world. And today we're going to focus on something that is really important to a lot of you, and that is how to get paid with your online business. Over the past several weeks, we've talked a lot about many of the foundational things that you really need to do to get your legal house in order when you're forming your LLC. God damn it. Yeah, if you can't tell, I just spilled my coffee. Anyway, what was I saying? So over the past several weeks, we've spent a lot of time focusing on many of the foundational elements of forming your LLC. This includes choosing the right business entity to begin with, switching from a sole proprietorship to an LLC, what you need to do to set your LLC up the right way, common mistakes people make when setting up their LLCs, all those real foundational things that you need to know about when you're starting your LLC. So over the next several weeks, we're gonna transition a little bit from things you need to do when you're first starting your LLC to more of the operational things that you need to think about when you have already formed an LLC. So basically everything you need to know to operate your LLC properly. Today's video is gonna be the first in a series of maybe four to five videos we're gonna do about the various aspects of operating your LLC. All right. Let's get to it. So for some reason, a lot of business owners are really somewhat fearful of the idea of paying themselves from their business. I'm not sure I completely understand this fear, but I think it probably has something to do with the fact that you're scared about doing it wrong or incurring some tax liability that you're not gonna be able to pay or something else. I, I suspect that's the case. Comment below and let me know if I'm on the right track, but I think that's probably right. So the way you pay yourself is really gonna vary in large part on the type of business that you have and the entity that you've chosen to run your business. In other words, as an LLC, it's gonna be a little bit different than if you are a sole proprietorship, which is gonna be a little bit different than if you're an S corporation, which is gonna be a little bit different than if you are a C corporation. Does that make sense, I hope? So today's video is gonna focus primarily on how to pay yourself if you're running a single member LLC. If you're a multi-member LLC, it's gonna be a little bit different and that's the subject of another video. But today we're gonna to talk about a single member LLC. And we're gonna talk about the two different ways that you can pay yourself as a single member LLC and that's as a disregarded entity on the one hand or an S corporation as far as taxing status on the other. So the first method to pay yourself is if you're a just a blanket, garden variety vanilla single member LLC you've not elected any type of S corporation status and the way to do that is you basically are going to write yourself a check we're going to talk more about that in just a minute the second method is to actually pay yourself what is called a reasonable salary and when you do that you're actually going to withhold payroll taxes FICA state and federal withholding all those types of things will be done because you're going to actually pay yourself a salary and you're going to receive a w-2 at the end of the year just like you would if you were an employee for any other business so you do this when you've made an s corporation election for your business and that's because if you've elected to be taxed as an s corporation you have a legal requirement to pay yourself that reasonable salary we just talked about so you're probably wondering what is a reasonable salary that's a great question i'm glad you asked so a reasonable salary is something that it's a term of art that was created by the irs and it's basically basically going to vary depending on the type of business you're in and your role in that business. Hold on a second. I think it's time for coffee break. I've got a new coffee mug since I'm at home today instead of at the office. I th and the reason I'm doing that, by the way, I'm sorry for this little brief interjection, is because the acoustics were really bad at my office. I just wanted to test and see if I did it here, if the sound actually was a little bit better. So generally speaking, what a reasonable salary is, is the amount of money that you would pay yourself if instead of being the owner of the business, you were actually the technician doing the work in the business. Does that make sense? So for example, if you were a law firm, like I run a law firm, it's the amount of money that I would pay myself if I were a lawyer working at a similarly sized law firm. If you are, let's say, an agency owner, it's the amount of money that you would pay that graphic designer to do the work of designing graphics for your clients or customers. So when you elect to be taxed as an S corporation, it does get slightly more complicated and a little bit more confusing when it comes to the payroll aspects of your business. And I'm gonna venture to guess, and, and this really isn't that much of a guess, I don't think this is that far-fetched, that if you elect to be taxed as an S corporation, in all likelihood, you're going to need to go ahead and hire a bookkeeper or an accountant 
or a third party agency of some sort service who can help you run payroll for your business. I've actually included a link down below to a service that I know and love and that I actually use for my law firm. I just want to make sure this is clear. If you elect to be taxed as an S corporation under no circumstances, unless you have an accounting background and you know how to do these things, should you try to do payroll on your own. You will, will 100%, I guarantee, mess this up. And not only that, for like 50 bucks a month, you can hire a service that's gonna do all this for you. They're gonna file all the forms. They're gonna file your quarterly taxes. They're gonna deposit the money in your account. They're gonna do all these things for you. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Anyway, again, link down below to the description. That is an affiliate link. If you do decide to move forward with that vendor, I think I get a free month of service or something. Nothing major. I appreciate it. So back to what I was saying at the beginning about paying yourself a check if you're a single member LLC. For the vast majority of you out there who operate as an LLC, you're going to be what's called a disregarded entity, which means that you have not yet elected S corporation status or C corporation status or any taxing status for that matter. For those of you that fall into this situation, you basically can pay yourself whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want, from your business bank account to your personal bank account. That means you can write a check. That means that you can do an electronic transfer. If your bank allows business to personal transfers, some do, some don't. Or you can just withdraw cash and deposit into your account. The only requirement that you need to be concerned about is, is to make sure your LLC is properly capitalized so that you don't run the risk of violating any terms for purposes of piercing the corporate veil. So let's touch on briefly how much you actually are gonna pay yourself as the owner operator of your single member LLC. I actually did an entirely separate video on Mike Michalowicz's Profit First System, link up here. And I highly recommend that you watch that video if you're trying to think about how much you need to actually pay yourself. But basically here's the general idea. For a single member LLC, each month when you get revenue in, you're gonna pick a couple days, let's say the 10th and the 25th, and you're gonna make target allocations. So that might be anywhere from 30 to 50 to 60% of your revenue is going to go to your owner's pay. And you're gonna take that amount, that percentage from your revenue, and you're gonna transfer that into an account for owner's pay. The remainder, whatever's left, is gonna be divided up between profit, taxes, and expenses for the business and you're gonna have separate allocations for each of those. And you're gonna transfer the money into a separate account for those categories as well. So you're gonna have four accounts, owner's pay, expenses, taxes, profit. And that's how you're gonna pay yourself. Again, I included a link up above to a video I did on this entire system. Check that out if you wanna know more. Or alternatively, you can read the book Profit First. Again, link down below to that book from Mike Michalowicz. It's awesome. If you listen to the Audible subscription, it's actually even better because he's a hilarious guy. He's kind of corny like I am, but he's way cornier. If you're looking for a checklist of everything you need to do when you're first starting out with your LLC, I've included a link down below to a checklist that you can download. It, this is a monster guide to starting your online business that talks about everything you need to do and think about as you're just getting started. And obviously, this is all from a legal perspective so that you can make sure that you've properly protected your online business. So if you missed my last video on how to convert your sole proprietorship to an LLC, I'll include a link up here. Not only does this video have a lot of great information on how to convert your sole proprietorship to an LLC, it also has a lot of good information on the different things that you need to do when you're starting your LLC just to begin with. Thanks so much folks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.